This is the sales brochure for a mock Tudor house in Constantia in Cape Town. It's selling for two and a half million pounds. So really, I mean, business has looked up and the property market yes. has looked up since, since the ANC government came in. Yes, it? yes, it, it certainly has. And I think that, that because of the uh, people look to this uh, country as being a country with a future yeah. and forgetting about baggage of the past. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities here. Uh, but has, has lifestyle changed uh, at all? I don't think, I no. don't think that there, there are many changes yes. at all, um, other than, as I say, a change of attitude. Yeah. There is a definite change of attitude. Now, I understand you sold Mark Thatcher his house. Could, could you tell me something about that? He bought a very beautiful house in mm. Upper Constantia, a lot of character, beautiful views, mm. exquisite garden, mm. and lovely reception rooms. It's got a lovely, it really has mm. a lovely atmosphere. In a way, it's a sort of, has a bit of an African flavor. And I know that um, Baroness Thatcher liked the house. She was there and admired the views and thought it was, it was a lovely home for well, her, for her son and for her grandchildren. She's a great friend of South Africa. She's been she is. supportive over she the is. years. Yeah. She's fantastic. More than a million people have been given access to running water. It's one of the government's success stories. Yet up to 14 million still have no reliable water supply. While whites continue to irrigate their gardens and fill their swimming pools, women like these walk half a mile carrying water that is often polluted. These homeless women near Cape Town are building their own houses, having raised the money themselves, proving that given the resources, people will do the job. They are a symbol of what is possible. We are going to change the South Africa. The people will change South Africa. Yes. Now it's better to, to do ourselves. That's why we said it's our dreams. One week to build a house of this yes. size. It was one week. And because there were members who helped me yeah. to build this house. Yeah. How, many, how many women were working on it in that week? It was 25 women. How did they learn how to build a house? They have learned a lot because the others, when the time they were getting, they were getting themselves involved in this project, they do not know nothing about building a house, about measuring the size of the plot. So when they get in the project, they learn a lot yeah. how to build a house, how to divide the rooms. You must feel very proud of it. Yes, I do feel very proud because in my life, I didn't know that I could have a house like this, because before I was living in a shack. So this is a new life, completely new life. This is a new life for me and for my husband and for my children also. The first time I flushed my toilet, I was frightened. I'm afraid because I didn't ever have a toilet inside my <laughs> One of the outstanding achievements of the new South Africa has come from the Ministry of Health, led by a courageous woman, Dr. Nkozazana Zuma. The rule of apartheid left 87% of black children in poor health, many of them malnourished and stunted. There is now free health care for pregnant women and children under six. Mm -hmm. Clinics have been built where there was none, and millions of children have been immunized against rampant diseases like polio. Last year, abortion was legalized, and in the first six months of the new law, 13,000 women did not die, nor were they subjected to the indignity and pain of backstreet abortion, which was a unique feature of life and death under apartheid. A humane society, said the minister, does not happen as a miracle. This is Dimbaza, 
the secret heart of the old and new South Africa. In places like this, a million people were dumped by the white regime. When the trucks brought the first people here to a windswept hillside without water, the children were the first to die. And here lie 500 of them. We are housing redundant people in Dimbaza, said a government official. People who cannot render productive service. Today, the people here are redundant yet again. It's ironic that the children's graveyard is now an industrial graveyard, as foreign-owned factories built by the apartheid state as a showcase have mostly closed down, leaving 70% unemployed. One factory still working makes T-shirts for designer labels sold in the West. It overlooks the children's graveyard. A reminder of the price paid by the most vulnerable South Africans on their long journey to a place in the global economy. Coming back to South Africa, I've been surprised to discover a generosity of spirit that survived the atrocities of apartheid. It's a humanism expressed in a distinctly African notion that people are people through other people. The sense of community and sharing is not without the usual frailties, but the evidence of its resilience is everywhere in this country. And this film has been a tribute to that vibrant quality, but tributes are not enough. Did people vote to exchange apartheid for a democracy of privilege and poverty? Did all that celebration take place so that the new South Africa might be slotted into a predetermined economic system? A global apartheid whose only certainty is that the rich get richer and the poor poorer. Nelson Mandela himself has said how many times have the liberators betrayed the ordinary people at the moment of victory? If the ANC does not deliver the goods, the people must do to it what they have done to the apartheid regime. It was the ordinary people of South Africa who set the pace of change. It was their humanity and their courage that triumphed here, proving that fundamental change is possible. It will be a tragedy for all of us if their continuing struggle goes unrewarded for its inspiration and lessons are universal.